Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Miss Dehino with Miss Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, I'm going to be kind of sharing with those of you that teach robotics and you have been forced because of your school closures to go online and with online learning. Some of you have been asking me, um, hey, Miss Gino, what are you going to be doing, you know, for online learning? And my district, um, I guess for equity reasons, because not everybody can jump online, has decided to not do any online learning at all. But I still have a plan in place because sometimes my students come to me with independent study requests. Actually, the parents come to me with independent study requests. And so basically what I have to do is I have to have, to have a plan ready to be able to give to the student, um, you know, if they're going to be going away on vacation or whatever the reason is for their independent study, I have to have a plan ready to be able to give them either if they have internet or if they don't have internet. So this video is going to just share some ideas with you on what do I do for that independent study for those of you that are teachers that ha now have to come up with a plan for your students that are doing online learning. So if you want to see all of that, stay with me. So for those of you that are teachers that are trying to come up with this online learning plan for however long this coronavirus issue lasts, I don't know if it's going to be able to last that long. I'm going to basically just throw out some basic questions that I would ask my students and basically have them either write it down. Um, they can send it to me through, you know, a digital email. Um, however, your students would, you know, answer these questions. I'm going to leave that up to you guys, but basically I'm just going to share with you how, you know, my questions would look like, and you can maybe take the ball with this and run with it. Maybe share some ideas back with me on how you might tweak it, but here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and throw out basic questions that I would ask my students for online learning. So here we go. So this first part, I'm going to call reflection. Um, I always want my students to be able to reflect for two reasons. Number one, it, it helps them to think back to what they've learned. And then for me, it helps me out to read the reflections and to improve the lesson, either, you know, within the time frame that we're still on the lesson or definitely for next year when I do that same lesson. So the reflection part basically helps the student and the teacher out. So this reflection piece, I'm going to basically dedicate to asking the questions of the students so that you can get all this information from. So here we go. Okay, so for this reflection part, I would first ask your students what their favorite lesson or project was this year and why and what did they learn? Um, I would also ask your students what they thought they struggled with or what do they still struggle with? That would be important just so that way at this point of the year, um, you can figure out, hey, what did I do a good job of? And what can I, you know, if I have to do this again next year, what can I do an even better job of? Um, I would also ask your students if they think you should change something, get rid of something, keep something forever. So you're going to have to, um, you know, have a little thick skin here and be able to take whatever, um, you know, what do we call that, uh, constructive criticism, where you're going to have to be able to have the, you know, listening ear to your students to be able to say, hey, you know, this didn't go so well, this is what I would recommend, um, this is something we should never do again, and this is something we should keep forever because, you know, it was so fun, it was so amazing, so... I usually love to read um, what my students say about that because, you know, as the teacher, you have a, uh, a tendency to just think everything's wonderful. Um, but when you actually tap into what the students feel and what their opinion is, um, you definitely get a, a different perspective. And I have changed many things over the years from, you know, the student responses that I get because, you know, ultimately they're the ones that you know, are in the class. They're the ones that might see things that you don't get to see. So it's just really neat to hear their voice and to figure out, you know, what are some things that if they could change it, if they could get rid of it, you know, or if they love it, 
And that would be something that, you know, like this launcher project right here, something we've just done year after year because students just, they learn a lot from it and, they, and then we have also, also have a great time with it. So that's just de definitely one of the pluses of, you know, uh, getting the student responses is that, you know, year after year, they just love it so much. And, you know, it's not always going to be perfect, but, you know, the students just have a great time with it. So these are the questions I would ask for that student reflection piece is just looking back on the year, all of the things that they've learned, what was their favorite lesson and why, what are some things that they still struggle with, and, you know, what are some things that they should keep forever, um, get rid of, or change. The next piece would be inquiry. And this is where we're just going to basically have the students um, ask lots and lots of questions and kind of dive deeper into a project. So have your students think of a way a robot can help people. So in this case here, this was our trash can project where we basically tried to help people that didn't want to take the trash out, couldn't take the trash out, um, you know, to create something that, that could help people. So the inquiry part now is, are there any obstacles to this idea? Are there any drawbacks? Um, you know, is it cost effective? So that way the students can dive deeper into this robotic trash can and figure out, hey, that sounds like a good idea, but there's some things we'd have to work out or iron out to make this completely workable. And then I would also ask students, um, what kind of robot would help you out most in the class? So, you know, obviously as teachers, you know, for me, I'd love a, a robot that could you know, pick up pieces off the ground. Uh, I love a robot that can sort all those different kind of pieces. But for your students, that might be something different. Maybe say, hey, what robot can can you think of that would help, you know, you or either us um, as a class in the classroom? So this inquiry part's real fun because, you know, they can maybe look up um, ideas of robots that we already have out and figure out, hey, that's a really great idea, but there are some issues and problems that I can see. And then, you know, let the students uh, run that, run with that, you know, figure out, hey, that's a great idea, but there's some issues that I notice, you know, either from the video or from the, an article or commentary that they read that, you know, it's a great idea, but, you know, there's certain times where maybe it's not the best idea. So another case is going to be um, this uh, line following robot in a restaurant. And, you know, we can think of so many reasons why that would be cool and, you know, how that would be so awesome and wonderful. But you can also think of ways that, hey, this might not be so great. And, you know, obviously let the students figure that out for themselves. But, you know, you can mention things like, hey, you know, the robot um, can break, uh, people can bump into the robot, people can sneeze on the food, you know, just a lot of issues that you'd have to think about before you, you know, roll, th roll these things out. So the inquiry part is really cool because the students get to, you know, figure all these things out and basically dive deeper into a topic. Okay, and lastly, I would have students talk about their sensors. I mean, LEGO EV3 is just so big on the sensors, the color sensor, ultrasonic, touch sensor, and gyro sensor. I would have the students reflect back on what projects or lessons did you do in class that involved their sensors. Um, you'd probably have to give them a list so they could remember because, you know, the year has been so long that you might, you know, they might forget what they did with each sensor. But, you know, I would have them talk about the color sensor, you know, did it identify colors? Did it have to do with reflected light intensity? Um, the touch sensor, how was it used? Um, the ultrasonic sensor, um, you know, kind of have them explain how the project worked. How did the program work within that sensor? Um, and then, you know, the gyro sensor, how it was able to keep things balanced. Um, just so it, it's just one of those things where um, 
you know, like I have, it, it would be a good idea to maybe document some of your projects on video so you can um, show them if they forgot or make give them a list of things so that they can, um, if they forgot, just go back and go, oh yeah, that's right, I remember now how we used it. Um, so, you know, whatever your question might be, just have it reflect back to the sensor. What did you do? What did you learn? What did, you know, how did the sensor make the program work? And then, you know, see what you know responses you might get. But since, you know, Lego EV3 is just so big on the sensors, it would, you know, it would probably not be good to leave that out. Um, so, you know, see what the students remember because they probably remember more than you think. So that would be my third part is just reflecting back on the sensors and, you know, projects or lessons that you've done just to see what the students remember and definitely what did they learn. Okay, guys, so there you go. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, you know, and I, like I said before, if your students are going to be online for a month, um, we kind of probably just scratch the surface of what you guys can do to help them with their online learning. But it's, it's a start and it, you know, for some of you, maybe it kind of triggered some other thoughts that you might be able to do. And if there's something I left out, definitely in the comments section, let me know what you added to it because that's what I'm doing, you know, if, you know, for next year, if somebody goes on an independent study, I'd love to be able to add your ideas to my list already. So I'm with you guys on this. I know it's not easy and, you know, it's something new that we're all having to deal with. So, you know, let's definitely throw some ideas back and forth um, to make everything better because, you know, I'm, I'm with you guys and this whole online learning. I just hopefully it's I don't know if it's going to be smooth or not, but I just want you guys to be able to, on the other side, be able to say, hey, everything did work out. So this is a start, and hopefully my ideas were a help to you guys. Okay, guys, um, keep plugging away. Um, this is something that, you know, we can get done together. So hopefully, you know, we can, like I said, on the other side, be able to go, wow, that was cool. We made it. Okay, guys, I'm Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out, and we got this. We got this. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys.